Hello and welcome to the third video in HPE Aruba Networking's VSG Expanded series covering AOS 8 to 10 migration. Now it's time to get our hands dirty and take a look at the CLI configuration and extract all the information that we're going to need to ensure a successful migration. Things like the existing mobility conductor hierarchy, where the configuration was inherited from, where it was applied, as well as other helpful commands that may not be critical but will save you a ton of time in the middle of a cutover. So let's get to it. When preparing for an AOS 10 migration, these are the key areas to focus your discovery effort on. In architecture, start with your configuration hierarchy, how your AOS 8 environment is structured and where settings are inherited. Capture AP groups, VAP profiles, and note where config was applied globally versus overwritten locally. And don't forget your high availability setup, cluster configs, VRP, anything needed for hitless failover. Next, gather all your wireless and wired networking details. That includes SSIDs, WLAN profiles, security types like WPA2 or 802.1x, VLANs, radius servers, etc. Also document your roles, policies, transmit settings, and DHCP scopes, everything that supports client connectivity. Finally, inventory your hardware. For controllers, record MAC addresses, host names, IP info, DNS, NTP, switch port settings, serial numbers. For APs, collect MAC addresses, serial numbers, AP model, group membership, and LDP neighbor information to map their physical location. Getting all of this up front will save you hours later and help you avoid surprises once you start building in Central. Let's quickly review how AOS 8 profiles map into the new Central UI library page. On the left, you see a familiar AOS 8 profile stack. It lists things like AP groups, RF, and WLAN profiles and AAA settings. These contain all your important configurations. On the right, they're clearly organized into various cards, such as wireless, VLAN and networks, security, and systems. Now let's connect some of those dots. Also, keep in mind that the mapping for every parameter is not one-to-one, -one, but much of it is, and I know that the younger me would have loved to have something like this to help me visualize the relationship between what I know today and what I need to understand in the next platform. Now here's a more detailed breakdown of some of the most useful AOS 8 CLI commands for configuration discovery. The first one is show configuration node hierarchy. This one will give you a summary of your groups, managed devices, and their paths. The next one is show AP database long. This one will give you the serial number and MAC addresses of every AP. If you issue it on the controller, it'll list the serial number and MAC address of every AP that's tunneled to that controller. If you issue it on the mobility conductor, it'll give you every AP that it knows of learned from all the controllers that it's managing. Show AP LDP neighbor is not critical. You don't need it, but it's going to save you a ton of time in the event an AP does not respond after an image upgrade. Inventory all your MCs with show open flow controller switches and show inventory. The show open flow controller switches is similar to the show switches command that you would normally issue in your mobility conductor, but it gives you the MAC address and serial number in the output. I recommend that you compare your show switches output with the show open flow controller switches output to make sure that the number of controllers match. I mentioned that because I've only found it recently and I want to make sure that it's going to work as expected. The show run configuration, obviously, it's going to contain all of the active configuration, whether it was inherited or applied locally. One of the things that I used to do is shoot an email with a list of these commands to the customer and request the log output. So I can use that information and do some config discovery before I arrive on site for the kickoff meeting. The last one in this list is show config effective detail or committed or diff. If you're not familiar with this, I'll go into detail in a few minutes here, but this will be very helpful. For hierarchy, you can gather the information via the MCR CLI or UI. Show config node hierarchy in this example will display the hierarchy using forward slashes to separate levels. This helps you visualize your existing hierarchy to plan the new central configuration model. These boxes map the same information between the CLI on the left and UI on the right. Show AP database long is the fastest way I was able to gather the MAC and serial number of my customers' APs. This is the information you'll need to onboard the APs into central. Running a show AP LDP neighbor, as I mentioned earlier on the controller prior to the upgrade is a great way to save time by recording where every AP is connected as long as LDP is enabled on your switches. If you have Aruba switches, you're good. If you have Cisco, 
make sure that you issue the LDP run command on every switch prior to running this command on your controller so you can see all of the neighbor information. Running the show open flow controller switches will give you this information here. On the left, you see this MAC address. On the right, you'll see the serial numbers for each of the controllers. And then traditionally, we would gather the information by logging into each individual controller and issuing the show inventory command. This will give you the same information that you see above. Show config effective detail in this example, it's pointing to the direct controllers. By issuing that command, you get the configuration on the left, the source from where it was inherited on the right, and all of it is separated by pound symbol. This will allow you to gather this left and right information, take this into a spreadsheet and treat it like a CSV essentially by going to data, text to columns, and then change it from a comma delimiter to other, and then type in the pound symbol. By doing that, it'll separate it into two columns and then once you have that, do a command T if you have a Mac or control T if you have Windows to convert that output into a table. Once you've converted it, click on that filter in step one in this screenshot, and then you'll be able to filter by the source of inheritance. You can see if the Chicago site had things overwritten locally, or if it was inherited from a different node above it and where. So this helps gather the information, sort it out, and then have this discussion with your team to make sure that you're looking at an accurate configuration. This here is from the VSG. On the left, it lists the information in the order that Central would expect it. On the right is where you would find the information. This is part two of that information. You'd see the commands on the right show inventory, show APESSID, the commands that we just walked through to find that information. All right, that wraps up the third video. I hope you find this information helpful. In our next and final video, we're going to walk through the discovery process using a configuration discovery tool built to reduce human error, improve consistency, and it's going to save you a ton of time. Pretty excited about this. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.